I'm Harold Gertner, and I got a chance to speak yesterday about our FICAPS project and some of the things we've got going on at Santa Fe um, with the TramCon programs and our CNA programs. And one main area we, we kind of neglected in that discussion was the funding issue, which is obviously the major focus for today and, and what's some, really a piece that most people are uh, probably the most interested in. Um, through our program, we've, we've had to approach things from a variety of variety of perspectives to make funding work, um, especially looking forward to this CNA program we've got coming up as an example. We've got um, some students that are, we've got a few organizations that are picking up a piece, like a community action uh, agency in Gainesville is going to be helping with our background checks. Um, the East Gainesville Development Consortium is going to be helping with some of our materials or tuition fees, the, um, and maybe some testing. Uh, the career source will be working with us, both with youth students and with adult students. So either the youth we owe or the adult we owe. And each student will kind of ultimately have its, their own little funding package. And so um, and we've heard some ideas today about really big funding packages that cover an entire program for people. And what we found is we have to put together smaller packages sometimes that are more um, focused and individual to each student in their particular background and where their, where their funding resources can come from. But one thing we got very excited about is there's a gap that some of our students fall in where we can't find, always find them funding and sometimes students have to come up with funding for themselves. But then we heard about the ability to benefit um, policy coming back into effect which um, takes care of a little bit of that funding gap for us by offering students who meet a certain testing level on the AccuPlacer test but do not have a GED to get financial aid for a program that is financial aid acceptable, like uh, already a financial aid funded program, um, that normally they would have to have their GED for, but now if they meet this requirement, they can get the funding um, anyway, become financial aid eligible before they get their GED because of their ability to benefit scores. And so really, Julie's going to get up and speak a whole lot more about the details of that and some things that have been changing with it even in the first part of this week. Hi, everybody. Isn't this a great conference? Thank you all. Um, but I do want to talk to you about ability to benefit. But the reason that Zelda had asked us if we wanted to speak on anything and the reason I volunteered for this topic was that at Santa Fe we are trying to work with our financial aid chief administrator to put together ability to benefit, um, ability to benefit packages for our students. And so I wanted to let you know where we are in our process, what we've done so far, and, and just kind of a little bit of hot off the press news. I've been emailing her back and forth today getting updated information for the presentation. So um, anyhow, um, I'm not going to go back and re-talk about what Harold just talked about, but it is true that we do have to find sources from all over the place to help our students. It's not just one place. And, um, and it is about building partnerships and, and working with people and getting people to, to work with you and get to know you. And I think the biggest thing is just to get to know people, go and meet with people. Nothing good may come of it the first time, but at least you're starting to build your relationship and you're getting to know one another. Um, people are busy, so a lot of times, you know, you go and you meet with somebody and you expect them to get right back with you, and they don't, but we're all busy too. And then I look at it as kind of like, um, I don't know how appropriate it is to say the Chinese water torture method, but um, I just keep getting back in touch with them and saying, hi, remember me, you know, it'd be great for us to get together. There hasn't been one person that I've gotten in touch with and built a relationship that something good hasn't come out of it. And next thing you know, um, you do find that they've got a grant going and they can pay for this and you can pay for this. You know, and so, so it is all about building the relationships, being pleasant, being happy, and just you know, knowing that maybe one day the Grand Canyon will be built with those little tiny drips of water that are coming down. So, um, so another one of our options is ability to benefit. Um, but what ability to benefit is, just to back up, it is getting funding for students who do not have a high school diploma um, by them passing a certain approved test with certain scores for a program that is 
financial aid eligible. And um, so the student, in order to get this funding, they can pass the independently administered approved tests, which I'll tell you what those are, and in your packet there's a whole list of them, or they can complete at least six credit hours or 225 con clock hours applicable toward their degree or certificate, and that is paid for by the student or somebody that can pay for it. So one of those cr two criteria have to be met. The third one that I was confused about completes a state process approved by the Secretary of Education. Note to date, no state process has ever been submitted for the Secretary's approval. And so um, I read that and I'm like, um, Mia, what, what does that mean? Because I know that people are going to ask me about that. And so she wrote me back and said if the state were to begin certifying Career Pathways programs, that um, then the schools could use that designation as being a certified Career Pathways program. And I'll talk to you in a minute about why being a Career Pathways program is so important. But first you've got those two criteria, or three. In your packet, there's a Dear Colleague letter. People have heard of Dear Colleague letters. That was new to me, like a Dear Colleague letter. And, um, and there's the link to it. And then there's an electronic announcement that I've also included in the packet. So in order to qualify for ability to benefit, along with the students getting the certain scores or meeting their hour requirement that they pay for on their own, they have to also be concurrently enrolled in an approved Career Pathways program. And that's what we're working on at Santa Fe, is getting our, our program to be an approved Career Pathways program. And I do want to say that the state and the leadership and Zelda and all the leadership team at the state have really been ahead of the game because when we're submitting our documentation and our paperwork to get us to be an approved Career Pathways program, we look back at our five-year plan that we did in the Career Pathways grant, and that's one of the pieces that we submit to show them we do have a Career Pathways program. We look at our grant applications and all the pieces that we write in there about the whole section about Career Pathways. We're using that to show that we're an approved, or we hope they're going to consider us an approved Career Pathways program. Um, so the students have to be concurrently enrolled and you have to do what we do. Provide the students with counseling, support services, uh, everything we're doing in our, in our programs, helping them with their financial aid applications, talking to them about what their career goals are, helping them figure out their future goals, helping them meet the entry criteria, talking to them if they run into difficulties as they go along. All of those are the support programs. Provide structured course sequences that are articulated and contextualized. How many times have we heard the word contextualized instruction? Allow students to advance to higher levels of education and employment. And we've all heard over and over again why this is so important. We've got those students that have been coming to our adult ed programs for years and they want to get a career, they want to get a job, they want to go out to work, and they keep thinking my life is going to start when I get my GED. Well, I don't want them to think that. I want them to think that they can start working toward their career now, and here's another piece of the puzzle to help them. Um, anyhow, all of this you can read over, but it's got to be developed and implementa implemented in collaboration with partners in business, the workforce, economic development. That's what we've been talking about all along. You've got to have your partners involved, and you've got to show that you're involving your partners. Be aligned with the educational needs of the regional community. Um, last year, we in our um, one of our workshops, we went through and we all pulled up, I think it was a requirement to come, we pulled up the requirements of, um, or what the high demand fields were in our regional area. So you want to be looking at that as you're, as you're helping your students plan your programs. Okay, so it just has to have two components, the adult ed component and a Title IV eligible post-secondary component. What is that? That's a program that's eligible for financial aid. So some of the programs that we've been talking about, like CNA, and um, we've been trying to help students with the 40-hour early childhood program, those programs are not financial aid eligible. These are the programs that are like the welding, the heating and air, um, the plumbing, the programs um, that are financially aid, financial aid eligible 
um, that do not require a high school diploma. And I don't know if requiring a high school diploma for certain um, programs is a local decision or if it's a state decision, but I know at our school we have a whole packet of which um, programs you can go into without your high school diploma and which ones you have to have your high school diploma for. Um, so there is, in your packet, I put the list of tests that are approved for ability to benefit, but I would also urge you to look at our, what our state guidelines are and what your school's guidelines are for tests that they um, use. Um, but we're going to use the AccuPlacer and um, more affectionately known as the CPT. The TABE is not one of the approved instruments. It was when Ability to Benefit was around before. A lot of you all will remember Ability to Benefit was around and then they did away with it and TABE was approved. Well now TABE is not one of the approved. And I, I put all the other tests that are approved in here and you can see their score, but I think the common one is, that people use is the AccuPlacer and that's reading comprehension of 55, Senate skills of 60, and arithmetic of 34. That's not real high. You know, if you're looking at where it is in the continuum, that's not college level. Um, that arithmetic of 34 is, is pretty basic. So, so hopefully we can get students to that level. I haven't done a crosswalk um, really with TABEs and with AccuPlacer scores, but I'm sure we could and just see um, I know there was a lot, one a long time ago, but I think that was on the old team. So, there's different timing um, of whether or not students are allowed to get um, a full ability to, or full Pell Grant, partial Pell Grant. I don't know that it, this even pertains to any of us. If none of us have ability to benefit um, in place at our institution now, we would all be on or, July, on or after July 1st. But that's in your packet as well. If you wanted to see the dates, it's in one of those letters. Okay, so what is our progress toward this goal? Um, we have met with the Director of Financial Aid and she's heading up a committee. It's, and, and like anything, it's not like you just go, oh, this is now allowed, let's just do it, and then we just start doing it. Um, it's, it's got to be put in place. There have to be processes put in place. We have to verify that we're an approved career pathways program. Um, we have to get the programming in place. IT has to be involved. And so we've met, and career and technical programs. So we've met with financial aid, career and technical, adult ed, admissions, registration, IT. All of those players are at the table. And each of the parties has duties assigned. We picked um, at our school the programs that we're targeting are automotive service, heating and air, welding and plumbing. So those are the four that we have in mind when this gets approved to have students concurrently enrolled in those. Now, wouldn't it be nice down the road if this turned into also an iBEST opportunity? But, you know, first let's get the funding, let's get them going, they'll be concurrently enrolled in adult ed, um, we'll be helping support them, and then we'll look down the road at, at bringing another iBEST along. Now, you cannot see this very well, but um, I don't know if you've dealt very closely with financial aid directors, but they have huge responsibilities to the federal government for the funds that they're in charge of. So they don't do anything lightly, they don't take up any process um, quickly and easily. And so our financial aid director has been very, very careful about putting together all the documentation that we're going to need. Um, she took the whole, all the requirements of the career um, of the Dear Colleague letter and she put it in a chart and she bulleted it. And then she said, okay, what's our process? How are we going to prove it? We've turned in, we've even turned in our, um, our job descriptions to her, we've turned in any articulation agreements that the career and technical programs have, we've been verifying that they do have business program advisories, we've turned in our NRS reports, so uh, anything and everything we have that meet this criteria. And then again, um, every single one are organized to meet the needs of the adult, are aligned with education and still, skill needs of the regional economy, have been developed and implemented. So she took all of those pieces, put it in a chart, and that's what we're working through. 
Now, this is our old document tracker, and because not only did, did she put it all in a chart, but then she assigned us all duties, and she also said, um, okay, I've got until this date to work on this, and then after that, you know, we don't have, we're going to work on, we have to work on other things. So you can see we all had duties, and I'm happy to say at this date, the status of all of these boxes is pretty much full. So she has all the documentation in place that she needs. So now we just have to go forward um, and get approved the next step and get our final stamp of approval. There was um, a hold from the state level. Um, there was something sent out by a USDOE trainer that she forwarded on to me. Because this is a big discussion, um, I'm sorry, at the federal level. Not just all the state financial aid directors trying to figure out how to get it going, but at the federal level, they're trying to figure it out too. And so she said, just when you thought you had a handle on the new Career Pathways program rule, this was the USDOE trainer, David Bartnicki. Um, Congress recently modified the law surrounding Career Pathways programs, the Appropriations Act of two 2016 modified the definition pretty significantly and modified other aspects. Therefore, we're waiting for more guidance. So when that came out, it's like, oh, hold the boat. You know, we've been working on all this stuff, but now we got to wait for more guidance. Just this, like, an hour before the meeting, um, I got another email from her, if, um, and she said that... Um, that there is now updated guidance and the rules on the definition of career pathways programs have been relaxed. So it sounded like good news that, that they're not going to be, I mean, of course we want to prove we're a career pathways program, but it seems like it's going to be a lot easier to make that happen. Now, I don't have the whole document attached to my PowerPoint because I just got it like about a half an hour ago. But I will send it to the IPDA website. So along with the Dear Colleague letter and the other letter, you also have that document to use. And then if you would like, I'll send a blank copy of our document tracker so that if you wanted to use that at your institution um, as you're working toward putting together your own ability to benefit processes, you can see how we broke it down and all the documents that we are gathering so that you can use this as a template to put it together at your institution. So, that's all I have to say. <laughs> okay.